We're here with Fuel Depot. Uh, this is map number two of this cycle, and uh, we're going to be taking another look at the good, the bad, and the ugly with this map, just like we did on Mansion. So let's go ahead and get started into this first round. Uh, too wide. And see what happens. So <clears throat> Joe calls too wide, which I believe they're going to send two people. Yep, two people over to the helipad. Uh, we've got one guy going mid and Joe sitting back. So we see one go mid through front door. One picked up nades. And there's two people on the truck. He wasted both wounds. I'm going to Jordan. I can't. Fuck, it's just me now. No, don't overcommit on that boom guy. Just be annoying on him. I wasn't on the boom. Well, I mean, he boomed you. So I don't we should have. But... We, we should have been pushed all the way wide. Okay, so I'm gonna use the overhead real quick to kind of show what went wrong and where the flaw is with the execution of that particular strat. Um, so what we see happen is we run two people to Helipad. And then Joe sits here, and it looked like J-Ribs went up across this way. So we're, we're ending up with three coming across helipad. I'm just going to put three X's here. Sorry, my hands are cold. And, uh, and then Joe kind of pushes up to here, and around, and up, into their truck eventually. Now, the other team, uh, we saw them pick up nades. And we saw one guy go front door, and then we ended up seeing two more guys right here. So we know where all three of them are, or are going to be. <clears throat> we also know that by us not picking up nades, and by them picking up nades, a good team is going to know that we're doing some kind of push strat. You don't skip nades on a strat that you aren't pushing. It's just kind of inefficient so they can assume that we're going to be pushing in some way either front door or across helipad the guy running front door sees that we have a guy sitting back and probably saw j ribs pushing up on the helipad so he knows as he's going into front door that we're pushing somewhere on helipad um so this information can be called out pretty easily between them which is probably why this guy this second guy rotated over and is now on truck um, he was probably either going to go back door or go to sniper, but when the call out was made, came back over. Uh, obviously, this is all just speculation, but he, they, their strat could have been just this kind of sit back with one go front door, but that's kind of odd. Um, so then we're in this situation where, despite Joe making good call outs, he's still going to be in a bad situation because he's kind of up here by himself, uh, you know, just in the middle of nowhere. We've got boom shot coming out the front door. Uh, I'm going to redraw all these real quick. So we got one, two, three, and uh, we've got Joe in this area. Sorry for the background music, by the way. I just I have a hard time thinking without music. And we've got boom shot chilling here. They're coming out front door. We got one, two there, and nades somewhere in this area. Doesn't really matter. So Joe by by Joe pushing up here, basically what he's doing is putting himself in the middle of four of them. Now, J Ribs, like somebody gets down, so we're just gonna say this guy. So he's inefficient, like he's basically a dead man because he can't do anything right now. Um, they do manage to pick up this guy, which is good. Uh, the issue is Joe is still between three of them and one of them has boom shot because he pushed up this far. Now, what he sh should have done is stayed kind of back on this box instead of up here. That way, and I can erase this Joe, that way, uh, he has uh, the ability to cross this guy at boom, and he can kind of angle it so he can cross this guy. Because this guy right here kind of was standing out in the middle when he came around, and that's why he pushed so hard. Um, so he can kind of lay down suppressive fire while his team is able to kind of push around behind, since they've already taken out this guy, and then they can kind of take control of that despite not having boom. Uh... But the, the main issue is one of us gets down and one of us, Joe, gets killed. So, uh, and it's just a, a simple overextension. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. It's, you know, just one of those in the moment kind of misplays. But that's kind of where this strategy went wrong for us is one of us got down here 
which made this kind of force ineffective because now it's just a two on two. Joe gets killed because Boomshot is free to pick up and then push out. And then that just kind of leaves these two guys on their own. Um, so we're going to go back and watch what happens round two and All right. keep going from there. I need you to try to shoot for me there, too. There's two guys out in the open. I don't know if my smoke is like, blocking you, but yeah, I was a little blocked. <coughs> I can't see. Sorry. I, open, I shot the guy that was on their pickup. Do it, do it. All right. So we're it looks like we've got... Halfway. Yeah. Watch for the nade pickup again. We've got two going back door. Frag no, picked up, nothing, nothing, or nothing. Scar picked up yeah, nades. They picked up nades. nades. They picked up right. snipe. Go all right, so we've got no one inside, and they picked up nades and snipes. So them ca calling out them going heli by Wingos was a really good play. Um, we picked up sniper. So we've got, at this point, we've got sniper, boom, and nades compared to their sniper and nades. So theoretically, we should have the map pressure. We should have control right now. Um, it's just a matter of establishing that pressure and that control. Um so what we need to be doing is instantly taking our power weapons and rotating them back around on the helipad, forcing the other team back onto their side, and then re-establishing boom control. Like, basically drawing a line of scrimmage that keeps them on their side of the map. We double smoke there. That's just miscommunication. Yo, let's, let's fucking push this heli, guys. Let's push this heli. And then you hear what He's on a 1v box. He's on a 1v box. I gotta go now. He backed up. He backed up from the 1v box. We're delaying our push a lot. They threw a nade, delays it more. Joe gets this guy really red. See, we don't need to be baiting anything right now. We could just be pushing up and taking control like that. So we get a good kill there. Good call out on snipe. See, what the other team's doing right now is they're establishing inside control so that when the next boom spawns, despite being a man down and despite being out of power weapon control, they still have boom control right now that we have to force them out of. <clears throat> we still haven't established any control. Like, right now, we've got a guy on our side behind us, and then we've got people in front of us. So somehow, despite it being us having man advantage, we're still getting pinched. Now we can establish that we have control of outside, they have control of inside. We have to get ready to make place for it. Manny, we need you Good call out on Boom. There's yeah, Boom shot up. Manny, so now we should immediately down. be rotating people over to pay attention to Boom. And we honestly should have known about this before. Like, Joe called it out maybe two, three seconds before it spawned. And we should have known about it at least 10 to 15 seconds before it spawned. Which is really simple to do. Uh, I believe... It's 90 seconds, but I'm not exactly sure. But either way, that's a simple thing to test. And then you just go into, uh, you hit the back button when it's picked up, and then just count, you know, down 90 seconds. It's a, like a little quick mental math problem. So they get boom. Despite it being a three on four, and despite us having the first boom still. So now we're scourging for whatever power weapons we can find. Ribs is kind of going off doing his own thing. Yeah, he's fatal's a little bit lost right now. Like he's not quite sure what to be positioning, and it it's pretty clear that we don't know what we're trying to do right now. Like we've already lost the boom shot, so our ability to kind of keep that power weapon control is gone. And at this point, we're just kind of, like, confused on what we need to be doing. Uh, Ribs is going around, like, kind of looking for a pick since he has one boom shot left. And everyone else is just kind of making callouts and holding position. Or Joe is rotating back and forth between wherever Ribs is pushing since he's not really talking too much. And the other two people since there's still three people alive and they have boom. So this kind of goes back to that mid-game rotation, like not being sure what to do, not sure what the objective is. Gathering power weapons is good, like getting the nades and whatnot. There's a snipe here, I can pick it up. 
So this round ends up being a stalemate, and what happens is Ribs gets killed here shortly, I believe, actually. Yep, right there. Uh, the guy was hiding with Boomshot, and Ribs got picked off. Uh, so that puts it in a 3-on-3. Three three. So we went from having a 4-on-3 and power weapon control to a 3-on-3 three three and no power weapon control. Uh, well, rel no boom control. Uh, and that's kind of an issue. We you know we need to know what we do with the boom shot when we get the boom shot. Because theoretically, like online, you shouldn't lose your good side. If if both teams are the same skill level, you shouldn't lose your boom good side. Um, just because of how the map's laid out. Uh, Joe gets a good shot there. That makes it a three on two. And then we pick up another kill there, but it's kind of too late. The round's over. Oh well. Uh... So it's unfortunate, it's just, it goes, again, goes back to what we talked about in a mansion where the middle of the round, like, it has its own kind of strategic game to it, and it doesn't seem like we quite know what we're doing. And I know, again, I'm going to say I know that Wingos is a new player, but uh, it's one player doesn't really change the mid-game rotations. It might make them a little bit more confused, but this round, we weren't quite sure what we were running. We see two inside for them, one back door, one definitely came front door. They've gotten snipe and nades. Our nades aren't that good. This guy is crossing the thing, and I believe the guy goes for boom shot here shortly. Yep, he goes for the boom shot, he slides it. Joe manages to pick up the kill, but gets downed. And then cleaned up. And this round... Like, now we have people kind of jumping in and fighting. He manages to pick up the kill. Three on two. We've got a three on two right now. I'm just going to pause it real quick. Okay, so we've got a three on two right now. We know that the boom shot was dropped somewhere over by that box. And so we've got man advantage. We've got power weapon advantage if we get boom. And this should be a free round for us. But nobody's picked up boom yet. We're all kind of hovering around ramp. They've got a good position set up where one guy can just sit there and L trigger, and this guy can just sit there and cross. And we're in this situation where we're constantly reviving. And then Wingo's kind of leaves. So he's not with the team. That puts it into a two on one from a three on two. Like, that shouldn't happen, especially when we have boom control. We had. Uh, where's my. My mouse keeps disappearing on me. Alright, I'm going to pull up the overhead map here real quick and show what happened. Okay, so on the overhead map, we had basically control uh, of all of this area. So we had, we knew, I'm going to put a little yellow for boom. We knew boom was down like right here somewhere. And we had a guy here here and over here somewhere and we knew that their guys were here and here and in this position I mean it's it's very clear right that we have the the control of the map uh, we have the power weapon control we have the map control um, the issue is we didn't take advantage of the power weapon control and we put ourselves in a bad situation so instead of grabbing this boom shot oops instead of grabbing the boom shot and then using that to push or pushing from multiple angles to trap this guy we all bunched up and went up the ramp into the only line of fire that their extra guy had and just allowed them to capitalize on their positioning so rather than taking and using what we had and capitalizing on our positioning and our advantages we played into their advantages and it was just kind of like a sloppy, almost cocky move to do, like that you could just push them and take them, rather than playing smart and safe and just taking the, you know, the f basically free round. So that's a kind of a big deal. Uh, you want to make sure that you slow down the gameplay and not lose those easy advantages. Get the boom first, guys. Guys, we can get the boom first. You tell me where the boom is. You guys gotta see that. I said the boom was on the high. Now we hear the team arguing. We're going into a new round, yet still talking about the last room. Ribs calls a new strat where he's going to be going front door. 
and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. So they picked up nades and snipe. We can predict that they're doing the same thing. Joe can call that they're not going back door. We've got our sniper. So we're in the same similar situation as we were that one round, the first round. This is where we need to push over, take control of the uh, helipad, and then reestablish like a line of scrimmage. And let me draw this out real quick um, for people who can't quite picture or don't really know the callouts. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is we have... Actually, hold on one second. We have a line of scrimmage, basically... Uh, or we have our players set up. Um, one on the sniper truck. Joe's like right here. Boom is somewhere in this area. It doesn't matter if he's up here or wherever. And we have Nades somewhere. And I don't know where Nades is, but I'm just going to say he's on this X because why not? And we know that they have, at least they have their sniper and their Nades. We don't know where the other guys are. Now, they're doing uh, a kind of a camp strat that we do a lot uh, on Denial and it basically either forces the other team to push us and hopefully we can win off of that or like you know win off them making a mistake when they push or let us get some headshots to hopefully make the round go into our advantage um what needs to be done by frag in this situation is they need to establish control of helipad right like there's nothing to play for in this area of the map right now and let me do that in a different color uh, there's nothing to play for down here at all right now. Okay, so just take this out of the picture. Right now, like, the, the advantage, the map control, lies on Helipad. So this is the goal right now. Like, after we've already won this fight. Now we need to win this fight. And that requires us basically just taking control. So Joe can sit on this car, and, like, he can move up like that, and sit on that car and watch, basically, that angle of you know area like that's his cone of vision basically while our sniper and it could be our sniper too if we wanted to in fact it might even be more beneficial to be our sniper um but while these three push up using nades and boom shot and possibly sniper take control of helipad right we want this yellow box to be pink we want it to be ours right so now we're going to be set up in a position where we can have people here, 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 and here, right? So now the map is kind of split this way rather than this way like it was before. Um, and we want to be able to make the map uh, like this. Like we want to slowly condense their control. Um, you know, this is their area. We want to make that blue area as small as possible. And the only way you're going to do that is in a strategy where they're running something like this is to just slowly corner them more and more with the power weapon control that we have. So what we need to do is be able to take back control of boom area and get the second boom shot, right? Like you're not going to be able to push in there and kill them without only one boom shot. So that's going to require at least two people because of this back door to be able to establish control of this. And you have to be careful of the little windows. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So, optimally, we're going to want to see control where we have one guy on helipad. We have one guy, like, kind of in mid, so either here or here. Like, this is kind of interchangeable. And then a guy waiting for boom. And a guy kind of, like, on this box or, like, maybe even getting out onto here. But that's a little bit risky until you know where they are. But basically just taking control of that side. Um, so, even if he sits down here and or sits up here and watches the you know watches across like this any of those positions will work whatever is safe as long as you know where their sniper is and whatever is safe based on the you know your current situation to give you the line of scrimmage across like this and we can even cut it off right there okay so like that's our line of scrimmage right now any action that's going to happen is going to be going across that line for either direction so once we have the double power like the double boom shot we can have basically two forces moving optimally you would want sniper up here and then you can have a force kind of pushing out this direction 
ready to clear anybody who's possibly, you know, you know, people like to hide over here in this the box thing, or on the back of Snipe Trailer, or back here, and then obviously somewhere back in spawn. So if by pushing out here and taking control of this area, it's either going to force them to push into the sniper and into the boom shot that we have uh, here, or it's going to force them back into spawn. Like that. Um, so let me clear that again. So sniper, boom shot one, boom two, and extra guy. So now our line of scrimmage is like that basically. So we've again condensed the area that they have from being like this to being like this. We've basically taken off this whole chunk. So the next move is going to be moving like chess, kind of moving these people uh, over here, moving this guy and this guy up to more control. So like to van and then clearing out behind this. So basically it's going to make the line of scrimmage. If we have a guy controlling here, here, and then basically here, two here, the line of scrimmage is basically going to be this. Like they're trapped in their spawn. And if they're at this point, um, it's going to really come down to like identifying where they're hiding and then using the nades and booms appropriately. So you want to think about the nades as almost like a decoy, right? Like it's, it's going to be hard to pick up a kill against good people with a nade uh, compared to a boom shot, right? So using the nade, like let's say they are hiding like uh, a guy here, a guy here. Uh, maybe a second guy here and a sniper back here, right? So the sniper is going to be the big threat, right? This, the guy here, like this, this area is going to be the big threat. So in order to get rid of that threat, you can throw the nade back here. And that's going to force, and then like maybe the second one right here. And at this point, we probably have two sets of nades. So nading off this section is going to force this guy to roll. Oops force this guy to kind of go this direction more and it's going to force these guys to be kind of on their own because sniper can't cover them at all and that's when you're going to want to have both boom shots kind of close in and pick off these guys and then at that point it's pretty easy to close out the round um so that's how you want to play out that kind of situation and sadly we've failed to do it or are about to fail to do it a second time according to my notes so let's watch this and see how it does play out I can smoke out front helicopter. Compared to how I drew it out. He's right there on heli. So we see that they have helipad. So we need to be forcing them off a helipad right now. And it looks like he ran off based on that mark. So there we go. We send three over to helipad. Ribs pushes up way ahead of everyone else. So they're not on the same page. Okay, hold on. I'm going to need him. He's on their backside right now, guys. That name might be good. I'm trying to He's one shot mark. He's literally one shot mark. You guys can use the nades. Out. Haven't gotten anything. We get a boom kill. That's good. One. Now we hold our numbers. Let's go. Where they at? Fuck. Yo, there's another kid over there at their back door. There's another kid at my grenades right here, Mark. And he fucking sniped me. Wingo's gets sniped. Right. I'm front door right now. He's what did he snipe you from, Tim? So now it's a three on three. We've lost our advantage. Got it. We got one. Got the advantage got back. back. So we've used our boom, but we've gotten the advantage. So now we need to be establishing boom control. And they did it already. He's one boom. Two v one of boom. Manny's fighting. Manny's fighting. I'm gonna help you, Manny. We get that guy. And Joe's making a good play here by backing up. His team's taking a long time to help him though, and he gets the kill. So that, like, even though it wasn't the optimal way of playing that out, it still worked. Um, but it more worked because of sloppy play rather than because of, you know, good strategic play. Uh, so, you know, it gets a win, but it's not clean. It's not surely not as clean as they want to do. So let's see what they run here. Joe smoking out front. We've got two pushing front. Looks like they were just pushing straight inside. One back door, he's calling out. Pushing in. Another one pushing for the kill. Another one pushing for the kill. I got a boom shot. We've, we're down the advantage. Right, we've got boom, though. Up our ramp, Manny. Uh, to be up our ramp, Manny. So we get that boom kill. That's good. I'm alive. I'm alive. 
So that makes it a two on two. We know where he is on front door. Um, one just is at their back. So the call out said he's getting snipe, and Joe's the only one shooting him. That was a free kill that we let go by. And we waste the boom shooting through the crack after he jumps out. Now we get the down there, that's good. But we've completely split up. Okay, we're kind of back together again, that's good. But they're going inside for boom, and we're rotating a little bit slowly. Other ramps, man. Other ramps. On the they're inside, holding above your box. They're gonna hey, this guy. I'm in that guy. I'm in that guy in the right, the right corner. He's taking the top ramp. You gotta get closer, Joe. Or he gets two v one. Yo, I'm going. okay for this guy in front of me. Green box, hot tub, green box, hot tub, green box. Two. I'm gonna help you, man. If they push. This is good by Joe to walk up and help him. To get some good shots on. Also good for him to come down and watch this section. Scar gets a little bit lost. It's a good revive. Another good revive. Way closer than it needed to be, but um, it was really just coming down to mechanical play and then bad communication. Or miscommunication, I should say. So, uh, just focus on being clear there, I guess, for the people who are dead and calling out. Because Scar obviously got confused. He didn't know if that guy was jumping up or down. And so he wasn't helping Joe for a lot of that, and vice versa. Joe wasn't able to really help because they weren't really sure how to play that situation out. Yeah, they're going to be here. One be in here. One getting here. One shot. One shot. He's hurt Mark. They're going to fly. They're going to fly. One shot Mark. Yo, we gotta get this late. So they're running a different strat this round. Boom, boom, dick. <laughs> okay, so... In this round, it looks like they kind of match us at front door. And, uh, and back door. Like, they kind of mirrored us on bad side. They sent one back door and then front door. Um... Now, let's pay attention again to if they picked up nades or not. Uh, I'm not seeing a nade pick up. Might not have been back far enough. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if, let's see if they do a nade pick up. Because that's going to tell us a lot about what they're doing. We get nades. They don't pick up nades. So that should tell us that they're going to do some kind of push. But it's not called out at all. It's just called out that they're here. And then he dies early. Joe's full red, so he's basically useless now. But runs back in. It's very tunneled. Every, it seems like a lot of people are very tunneled on what they're doing individually. And not so much paying attention to what their team's calling out. Which is really difficult. I've always praised FPS players for being able to communicate and listen at the same time. Uh, as you know, compared to MOBA players, but the 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 issue is like there wasn't enough communication there. So we knew by them not picking up grenades that they were gonna push, and yet we still tried to fight them up front. And Joe still jumped up on that cover rather than taking a more safe position, which got him full red and effectively killed. Uh, J Rib still tried to push in front, which got him killed. All right, let's see. Yeah, relax in your point, Jordan. One running in front now, weak as fuck. Okay, so Lancer, that guy, that's good. We're running that same strap from before. They're pushing up. Joe's sitting back, which is good. They get boom. So we get a good down front. Ribs is there to clean up. There's a really good crossfire. That guy can't fire a boom. There we go. See, the reason that one worked is because Joe sat back, so he wasn't caught in a bad position as compared to that first round. And then Ribs came back to clean up kills. And because three of them stacked up, it's kind of like when the three of us stacked up on ramp. Like, even though it was only two people, they were still outnumbered because they couldn't do anything. And they had boom, but if he fired that boom shot, he was going to kill two of his teammates. So best case scenario, he was trading a two for one. And that's not worth 
Obviously. So they're running something a little bit different. Get a good down. Get a good kill. Runs past the revive. Sorry for any video lag, by the way. That's just the stream replay. Alright, so this leaves Wingo's in a 1v2. And I'm pretty sure this ends up with just him getting boomed, which is unfortunate. But uh, let's take a look at kind of what happened that. Because I think this was the big controversial round for you guys. Uh, or for this team, rather. Okay, so he's calling out their back door. And I hear them calling out that they're they're not coming. Uh, at least I think that's what's heard. Um, he gets that guy full red. Ribs pushes in. And... He get, that guy gets downed and cleaned up right here, but Ribs gets downed. And now we see, at least we see, one guy's come in front door, one guy's right here, and then one guy's dead. So we can presume the other guy's outside somewhere. Uh, bad arrow, but... Last guy's outside somewhere. So we've got three people accounted for, and we still, we've got the advantage right now. Even with Ribs being down, we've got the advantage. So what we need is one more person coming in front door, one person kind of mirroring whatever this guy is doing, and then we have an, a winning fight inside with a three on two. That's theoretically what should be happening. Now I'm going to try to pause and play a lot here. Okay, so this is starting to get a little bit laggy for me, but Joe skips the revive, right? Which is not good. I mean, uh, he could have revived slid, right there which would have picked up ribs and put him still in a safe position or he could have just revived him like you know it's a land scenario and hope for the best uh based on the situation that i just paused they weren't really within range like this guy who's right in front of him right now was switching weapons and the other guy was not in position to really cross yet it looked like he was reloading or something um So he gets him with a good shot here, it looks like. And then rolls into a wall, which is unfortunate. And then Manny and... Or, I'm sorry, Scar and uh, Wingos completely split up. Like, they go different directions when they come inside. Which causes Wingos to get, you know, separated and alone. And Scar dies. So... It puts Wingos in that 1v2 situation. Now, realistically, let's take a look at the overhead map. Um, so we ran uh, basically one back door coming here and two or three front door-ish. Uh, it doesn't really matter if we pick up nades, but I think we picked up nades. So we picked up nades and that, and they ran two back door. And then one front door and one somewhere over here. So what we see happen is this guy jumps down and pushes up. This guy sits back and this guy comes inside. But he comes inside delayed after Ribs comes inside. Ribs comes in to fight that guy. Joe comes over and helps. And then Ribs gets down and they get that kill. So now we have uh, Ribs down here. Actually, I'll make him a different color because he's down. So Ribs is down here. Pink is us. Joe's right here. Uh, presumably one guy here for us and one guy somewhere over there for us. And based on that pause screen, one guy here, one guy here, because he's jumped down now. And one guy out in Wonderland. So... Our course of action, like in this scenario, we've got the advantage. Now, obviously, boom's the priority. So the thought of having these two guys push this guy gives up boom control. And it would make it a two-on-two -two with no boom control, which would really be tough. Now, what I was saying uh, when I had the replay up 
is if we have this guy come in, which I think is Wingo's, and take care of this guy, or even just sit there and cross, we have Scar focusing on this guy, or vice versa, Wingo's outside, Scar coming in, doesn't really matter. We have Joe pick up this, or pick up ribs. We now have four active people. It would be a two on one here, a one on one or a lancer fire on one, and a one on one out here, which is probably going to be a stalemate. It's going to give us boom control because uh, in a perfect world, like R2 will win this. And even if this guy backs up to here, like avoids Wingos or Scar, whoever comes inside, we're going to have him trapped because we're just going to pinch him. And that's going to leave this guy, oops, Scar, I guess I got to do it this way, their guy wherever he is, and Scar just kind of stalemated outside, which is fine because then we'd have a four on one. Um, and that would have won us the map if we had played it out like that. Uh, if the revive had happened and the guy had rotated inside. Now, I believe, I'm not going to go through and watch it, uh, but I believe there was kind of like a post-game discussion and almost like an argument about like the whole revive thing, uh, where the blame was put on Joe for not reviving. And yes, he should have revived. I completely agree with that call. He should have made the revive, and then we would have been able to force our advantage. That being said, our guys outside didn't rotate properly, which comes to knowing what to do mid-round and communication. Excuse me. And if w even just one of our guys had rotated in, we would have had the advantage. If both had rotated in, we would 100% had the advantage. It would have been a four-on-two for a brief period of time with this guy kind of not knowing what to do. Um, but either way, we would have had some sort of man advantage inside and been able to win this fight. But by Joe pushing past and not getting the revive at the same time as our guys being late rotating inside, uh, it just came kind of became like a situation where both Joe and ribs died and then it made it a three on two and they had boom control. And the issue with that, I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory, uh, but the issue with this whole outside thing is their guy, like, Ribs came inside first and got, like, this whole down and kill thing happened. And then when I paused it before, we saw, like I pointed out, the guy was standing there and the guy was standing there. Now, if they sent two back door and one of their guys had died right here, that means this guy who's standing on the, the ramp has come from outside because they only sent two back door. Which means that their their person from outside has rotated in faster than our guys outside. Which shouldn't happen. Especially when we know what we're doing on our strong side and we know what we're trying to play for. And if the smoke had cleared and we had seen that go on, then we should know that we need to be running in ASAP. And if the smoke hadn't cleared but we only know that there's one guy outside and we can hear their comms about three being inside, then we know we need to rotate in ASAP. So... In any situation, I don't think the blame can be put on one person because so many things went wrong at the same time. Like, Ribs running in suicide style, I think, is part of the strat, so I can't really fault him on that, even though it's kind of a reckless play um, based on the scenario that they were had two backdoor and then one following him in. Like, it basically momentarily put us into a three-on-two. Um, Joe not picking up the fallen Ribs... <laughs> Uh, that's an uh, issue within itself. And he could have revived slid that backwards so he would have ended up on this wall, sort of, and kind of, like, you know, confuse this guy, hopefully. Um, which, for if you don't know, same as weapon sliding, just with the revives. And if, uh, if our guys outside had noticed that one of their guys had come in, they could have come in behind him and kept him out of the equation so that this was literally a two-on-one. Uh, because we saw this guy even rotate over and help in this shotgun fight that Joe was fighting one-on-two uh, before our guys came inside. Like, that that shouldn't be happening. And I believe even, thinking about it now, that after that all went down and like they had the control of boom area with two people that Joe died to... Uh, 
we saw really quickly when Joe switched cameras that Scar died to a guy on this corner, which would mean that the the fourth guy pushed in and took their ramp before our guys did. So somehow their entire team came in the front door while our two guys were still, like, I don't know what they were doing out here. And I could go back and pull up Scar's replay, um, but that's kind of not the, the point, I guess, to find exactly where we were standing. The point is more that we should have had better communication and better rotations in general. And all of this aside, like ignoring all of this fun stuff, uh, the map was lost before this. Like there were enough rounds that happened that we had control and then didn't capitalize on that control that it doesn't even matter what happens right here. It mattered what happened a couple rounds ago. So to kind of summarize the points of this map again, we saw uh, mid-round rotations. Uh, I'm just going to put mid-rotations for simplicity. Or mid-rotate. Uh, our mid-round rotations were sloppy again. Like when we had boom control and taking the helipad and establishing the line, like all that stuff that we talked about um, was not good. The comms again. Like not clear, precise calls. Uh, there's a whole lesson on YouTube actually about being uh, about being clear with your comms and about how to communicate efficiently. So if you're interested in that, feel free to look them up. They're they're for multiple games. There's some for FPSs. There's a really great one that I use uh, for my League of Legends teams, uh, done by Monte Cristo, who's a very intelligent Korean caster and coach. Um, but basically, it comes down to not filling up the communication airwaves, like the communication space, with things that's not necessary or helpful information. And if you want to get super serious about it, that includes, you know, cuss words and stuff like that. That's literally just milliseconds of time wasted. But knowing the Gears of War community, uh, it's mostly just the complaining and the whining that happens a lot that needs to be cleared out. And that was one of the big things that I had to work with my guys on. Uh, you know, when you die and you sit there and go, oh my god, this guy's full red, why didn't he die? Like, that whole two seconds, three seconds of saying that could have been used to say, this guy's one shot on, you know, on sandbag or whatever, or calling out something like, you know, uh, Joe needs help, Joe needs help. Like, whatever you need to call in that situation better than whining. Um, so all of those things are things to take into consideration uh, when thinking about your team communication. Uh, and the last big thing uh, that I think I noticed uh, overall was tilting. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's just when you start to get angry and you start to play worse because you're angry or frustrated, or you start to communicate worse because you're angry or frustrated. Um, tilting happens a lot. It happens a lot when there's egos on the line, especially in this game. And it happens a lot when you think you're, you know, should be winning and you don't, or when somebody misplays and it's you don't understand why um that's a really big you know deal so when you start to tilt it affects this you know your communications start to go downhill and when your communications start to go downhill um it starts to affect your rotations and your strategy so it's kind of like a domino effect when one fails like when tilting happens the comms fail the rotations fail uh and then you get that fat l which nobody wants so that's kind of like the end of what I want to go over. Those are the kind of the main things for both maps that I noticed were going wrong. And uh, I think that this team is very strong. I'm really honored to be able to do this video. And uh, I hope this is helpful.